Highly educated women are less likely to be employed in the United States compared to 20 other high-income countries. How can we create public policy that benefits all families? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined today by Heidi Hartman, president of the Institute for Women's Policy Research. Heidi, welcome to the program. Thank you. So, you know, we, we continue to have this conversation about pay inequity between man, men and females uh, when women take off for work, whether it's for a pregnancy or to take care of their families. When they enter or re-enter the workplace, they're often behind their male counterparts. So here's the question. How can we make uh, policies that are beneficial to all families and in particular with women? Well, there, you're absolutely right that there's a lot we can do. First of all, as an economist, I can tell you that when men take time off from work, uh, maybe it's uh, to pursue an alternate uh, An advanced career degree or, goal, or career, yeah, yes. Like climbing a mountain or something. Uh, they suffer the same wage penalties. So, they do? Yeah. So this is a fairly common and oh, well that's good to know. understood phenomenon uh, within economics and the labor force. Is it because we live in a capitalist society where it's work, 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 and that's how you're measured, as opposed pretty, to taking time off for leisure activities? Pretty much, yeah. In fact, we have some professions uh, that people have been studying lately that actually pay you more for the extra hours you work than the hours that are normal, the 40 hours, and not because they're required to pay overtime. These are professional jobs. You can be paid double, triple, quadruple for those extra hours, like if you're a high-powered lawyer or something. And that's considered to be very disadvantageous to women because they're not likely to put in those lengthy hours because, unfortunately, we still have a division of labor at home where sure. You're absolutely right. Women are more likely to take care of the children and the older and, parents. And you know, well. Heidi, as I mentioned a few moments ago, highly educated women are less likely to be employed in the United States compared to 20 other high-income countries. Is it because of the role of the family and how most women uh, put the family first as opposed to their own career? Or is it something more complex than that? Well, I think I would hesitate to say that women put their family before their career. They basically are very committed to both. And the other countries make it possible for men and women to be committed to both. Uh, for example, many countries will have at least uh, three months of paid sick days, uh, parental care days. You don't even have to be sick, right? Once you've had the baby, the baby's born, you recover. Sure. You still have time off in those countries with pay, often with very close to full pay, to take care of that new infant and your other family Heidi, members. Heidi, this is a very simplistic question, but I think I have to ask it. Is it, is it the, the lack of women in leadership, meaning at the public policy level, that, has, that, that, in, that unfortunately doesn't influence the process enough? In other words, should we have more women United States senators? Should we have a United States president, more members of Congress that are women, that can influence the process? That would definitely help. Research shows that women of either political party in the U.S., when they are in office, they do introduce more legislation for women, and they pass it more often. Also, education, family-friendly, everything like that, because they've lived it. They know it, right. what it so takes. Right, so from experience. Yeah. But we have three states now that do have paid family leave. Those are California, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. Now, and actually, in those states, the workers are paying for the family leave by a small payroll tax that they pay. I think in New Jersey and Rhode Island, the employers may match that. You know, it's interesting, Heidi, we got about 45 seconds left. Oftentimes when California does something on its own, the rest of the country kind of follows. Is this a, um, a trend that perhaps maybe we'll see over the next couple of years in terms of work-family balance? I hope so. I hope many states will follow it. California has also done another great thing just recently three days minimum guaranteed sick day for everyone in the state. Oh, wow. That's very unusual. Again, all these other countries we're talking about, they have sick leave for everyone. They have maternity leave, paternity leave, parental leave. So the other countries are doing much more to help families combine work and family care. All right, to be continued. Heidi, thank you very much for joining us. Okay. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.